Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Macy's, specifically the Macy's at Paradise Valley Mall which is currently having its store closing sale. Here's a look at the entrance from inside the mall. As you can see they've got store closing signs plastered everywhere. Now this Macy's location itself, this building has kind of a long and interesting pedigree. It originally opened in 1980 as a Goldwaters. And then through a series of acquisitions and mergers, the name on the front of this building changed several times. It became a JW Robinson's in 1989, and then Robinson's May in 1993, and then finally it became the Macy's that we see now in 2006. I always find going to these department store closures interesting because as the signs say, all of the fixtures are for sale including all the old advertising and print work and stuff that's been hanging up for years. As you can see, a good portion of the store is now empty of merchandise and it's all just fixtures now. It's just one big department store fixture graveyard now. That last act signage that you see there is Macy's clearance section, and this mall had quite a few of those last act sections. We'll see those pop up quite a bit throughout the video. Twenty twenty was a really hard time for all of the department stores, but it was particularly hard for Macy's. There's just a sad, solitary, fake Christmas tree over here. I'm guessing people bought up all of the Christmas decorations already. I'm sure Macy's stores always have a ton of those because Macy's is kind of known for Christmas. This Macy's location is part of a list of around 60 stores that are currently in the process of closing or have already closed. In early 2020, before the pandemic situation had gotten out of hand, Macy's had announced they were planning on closing 125 stores over the next two years and those around 60 stores that are closing or have already closed are part of that 125. I thought this was funny. All the signs say nothing held back, except for this, I guess. But that makes sense. This probably has to get shipped back to Sunglass Hut. They probably own all of that display. Now we're kind of getting into the front part of the first floor where they've pushed all of the merchandise to. You can see most of the jewelry cases and perfume cases are empty at this point. Man, they really did put a lot of closing signs all over the place. It's kind of ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen this many closing signs in a uh, liquidation sale before. Look, look at that. Look at how many there are. Now, even though Macy's stores had a really rough year in 2020, their online sales really started to take off. And that's where they plan to pivot some more attention to is their online business and also shutting down those 125 stores, which happen to be in malls that are not doing well, such as this one, Paradise Valley Mall. Something else they've started to experiment with is standalone stores and stores with a much smaller footprint, and those stores seem to be doing fairly well for them as well. It's interesting to see all these clothing racks because apparel has been one of the areas that has been particularly weak for Macy's recently. Something else I like about going to these department store closing sales is that with most of the product gone, you really get to see the bones of some of these old department store buildings. Like you can tell a lot of this display stuff and everything is just really old and you have to wonder how many of those name changes did all of this stuff make it through. This building has been a functioning department store since 1980, so there's multiple decades of department store stuff just all throughout. You can also see just how banged up a lot of the fixtures are. This was an interesting part of the sale. They just had a whole area dedicated to rugs. I don't remember Macy's stores having this many rugs before. It's possible those were brought in by whatever liquidating company is handling this sale for Macy's. It's interesting walking around through here because this became a Macy's in 2006 and I'm not sure that Macy's changed or updated anything besides the signs.
I had mentioned earlier that one of the things that was actually going well for Macy's was internet sales and this is something that I've noticed uh, more and more in their stores is this little section they have set up for order pickups for people who order things on the internet and then do like ship to store and then pick it up here for free. Now they were doing this before the pandemic and I started noticing these little sections popping up in Macy's and then I kind of noticed those sections take up more and more of the floor space in the store. You can see they had quite a bit dedicated to that here. Oh, I like this section over here quite a bit with the uh, wood paneling and the dark green and brass trim. That is classic department store aesthetic right there. That really carries on for quite a bit of the store too. It looks like this may have been like the entire men's department. And there's that uh, last act sign again, so this was the clearance section. Something Macy started doing at stores that were underperforming, that were you know usually at malls that weren't doing well, was shipping in more and more clearance stuff and not so much higher end product. And it seems like now with the list of 125 stores they're closing, they're just you know moving away from that completely and giving up on these stores. Oh, the brass is really shiny on that. These stainless steel tables are kind of neat. Those are probably from the uh, like kitchen appliance and home goods department. That's an area where sales have actually been doing pretty well for Macy's is the home goods stuff. After this store finishes its liquidation sale, I am guessing that eventually it will be demolished. There were recently redevelopment plans for Paradise Valley Mall that were approved. I believe this, this store was already planned to close, but now at this point it looks like the entire mall itself will eventually be closing soon so they can redevelop it. I've looked at the proposed uh, redevelopment and it doesn't look like there's going to be much, if any, of the original mall left standing once they're done. Like, this even looks like a really nice men's shoe department. I know it doesn't meet modern design standards, but I am a fan of this classic department store design. Now, even though Paradise Valley Mall itself is only one floor, this Macy's is two floors, so let's go ahead and head up the escalator and take a look at what's going on up on the second floor. Up on the second floor, it's all just fixtures. Very little product is left. There's a little bit there. That's the chunk they would kind of put by the cash registers to try and get that impulse purchase out of you. But otherwise, everything is just shelving and fixtures. And uh, really old carpet. I'm really surprised Macy's did not replace that when they put their name on the front of the building. It has seemed like the Macy's has been neglecting a lot of their older and some of their underperforming stores for a long time now. So again, that's another reason why it doesn't surprise me at this point. They're just, you know, cutting bait and giving up on these stores, which is probably the right thing to do for the health of the company. Oh my God, look at that red tile. That That's not even like cool department store aesthetic. That's just kind of tacky. Like, this doesn't look like a Macy's over here. This looks like a Sears. There's even big cracks in the tile. That just looks terrible. Ooh, the executive offices. Oh, look, Martha Stewart. I remember when the uh, Martha Stewart collection was a thing at Kmart, now it's at Macy's. Looks like Martha's not doing too bad for herself, moving up. Now this is interesting, this little uh, lighting and art gallery area, that reminds me of Ikea.
This whole store really is just a mishmash of stuff between the different names it's been and then the different design choices that have been made throughout. Because now we're back to that like wood paneling again and you know dark greens and super old carpet. Like, th there's no way that carpet's original, but it's old. I, I would be if it's original, that would be amazing. That's the interesting thing about Macy's too is that. You know, most stores like, you know, Sears, for example, or even JCPenney, all of their stores kind of all look the same. They kind of have the same standard, whereas you can go into a Macy's like this that just looks old and banged up. And then you can go into a different Macy's store and it'll be gorgeous. Here's some more weird department store art. I wonder if anybody ever buys any of that and actually hangs it up in their house. Now, the color of this carpet is is just amazing. Again, I, I can't believe Macy's didn't replace that. This always amazes me, too, about these liquidation sales. Is they, they literally liquidate everything, even old cans of paint that they have in the back. This isn't the worst thing I've seen at one of these liquidation sales, though. I've seen, like, half-used bottles of Windex and scrubbing bubbles. It really is wild. Just they'll put, they'll put out everything. It really gives you a sense of how big these places are when you see them empty like this. Even though Macy's is planning on closing 125 stores by 2022, and there is a part of me that thinks that list may grow a little bit, but I think it is the right thing for them to do. They're obviously having some success in the online domain now, and these older, weaker stores are really what's dragging them down, so I think it's just you know best to cut the weight off around their neck. I think if Macy's online business continues to be successful and grow and they're able to get out from underneath these underperforming stores, they do still have a good chance of survival. And here's where they carry the uh, boys' random office supplies, sizes 8 to 20. <laughs> Man, look at those old filing cabinets. I bet those have seen a lot of years here. This must be all furniture from those executive offices that we saw earlier. We're now back downstairs again towards the front of the store and Mark was actually in the market for some new kitchen gear so we kind of started picking through some of the boxes but none of it was well priced even on clearance. There's really not a lot of product left. There's a lot of this kind of crap. This looks like those cheap Christmas gifts that you see in department stores. Here's another really good example of just the crazy amount of store closing signs they have hung up. Like it almost hurts the eyes just to look at all of them. It's very distracting. Personally, I hope Macy's makes it. I've always kind of liked Macy's. It's one of the few department stores that I... I can't think of ever really having any bad experiences in. Plus, I also, you know, do really enjoy the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So, if Macy's went away, that would suck to lose the parade as well. What are your thoughts on Macy's, though? Is is this a place that you shop at usually? Would you be upset if, if Macy's ended up going away for good? I'd, I'd love to know down in the comments below. This is where we're going to wrap up the tour of this Macy's, though. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my update video on Macy's. I'm sure you caught earlier that I mentioned that Paradise Valley Mall itself will probably be closing soon, so spoiler, there probably will be an update video on that mall as well. So. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see that video, make sure to hit that subscribe button.